Why won't God's Not Dead die? Hi, I'm Mark. Hey, I'm Scott. Oh, man, why won't God's Not Dead die? That is the question. I know it's like it's it's bad enough that you know that they're they're putting out this this other movie, mm -hmm. um, but then the 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 company you know Pure Flix is like they they <laughs> this stupid article comes out, and it's like okay hey you know you know we just want to know like like are are we reaching more people for God with our programming? Yeah, and you know of course you know there's that troop of people out there who's going to be like. Well, of course, you know, you're, you're, you're making Christian movies for Christian people. And my problem with that is that they're making Christian movies for Christian people. Exactly. Um, well, I guess that's my first problem with it. Yeah. They're right. preaching to the choir. Right. Exactly. So it's like, you know, to bring people closer to God, you can't just be only reaching out to people that already, you know, believe in Jesus. Yeah. Um, but then it's like, if you watch Pure Flicks, you know, any of the movies that I've seen from them, and I've watched several. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing over and over again. And God's Not Dead is really bad about this. Right. And that's the whole, like, we're going to caricature everybody. So their, their versions of Christians are complete caricatures of Christians. Right. But moreover, it's like their, their presentation of anybody who's not a believer is horribly caricatured as well right so it's like you don't even present that there is nuance to how maybe these people should interact yeah and then maybe like lastly my 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 big line item is that um they are presenting a very very specific viewpoint on what christianity is yeah it's this narrow slice of pie and you know it's like if you're not this you know basically white evangelical American, then like you're not really truly the best kind of Christian. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, I mean, how are you bringing people closer to God? I don't, I don't know. Right. It's funny because like, apparently the goal, like you said, the goal is to quote unquote, bring people closer to God. Right. And so mm -hmm. I'm left and I think probably you're left to wonder how we're going to accomplish this. Right. And so, in my mind, it kind of like, okay, movie number one, God loves you, right? And then, oh, we, we, we have to draw people closer to God. So movie number two, you know what? God really loves you, like a lot. Like, that's to me what, what it, it's kind of like the equivalent of that. Or, or like, um, you know, my I mean, little girl, she, lucky. Like, my, my baby girl, like they're doing multiplication and division in school. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's it's as if the teacher one week kind of goes, hey, let me blow your mind. Four times four equals 16, right? <laughs> yeah. And then, like, the next the next day, like, you now let me really blow your mind. Like, six times six is 36. It's like it's the same message. You've just kind of moved some details around. And you're not actually drawing anybody anywhere except to feel better about where they already are. You yeah, know, cause but, like, pe but people aren't actually like I, I always hate to I always hate to make the metaphor of a game or a war. Right. Mm -hmm. But like in a game, you've got to move the ball up and down the field or in a war. You've got to either, you know, push the enemy back or else you get pushed back. And in these movies, we're not actually moving anywhere, anybody anywhere. We're not moving anybody deeper into their faith. And people are not going to these movies because like. Oh, I don't believe in God, and maybe I want to believe in God, you know, because that's a lot of money to maybe want to believe in God, right? After you go movie tickets, uh, popcorn, uh, and all the other things that go along with the yeah, evening. But like yeah. Christians keep spending money on this stuff. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Because here, let me. <laughs> yeah. So, so Hollywood, the best of Hollywood, mm -hmm. right? Let's see, like, what would be the best of Hollywood? Um, the Godfather, for instance, right? Okay. Godfather is what happens when you get. Um, a, a movie studio that's willing to take a risk and you put that together with um, a writing writers that are incredibly like world-class along with the director that's world-class and has a vision along with actors that are world-class and, and know the difference between like raising your eyebrow one millimeter or two millimeters and how that changes <laughs> the way the audience <laughs> perceives you. Right. And then you go to the Christian industry, which is kind of like, um, 
It's like soap opera. Yeah, it's like people people who are not at the elite level, but who refuse to kind of reconsider their career options, right? Like, yeah, I'm like, gonna... Uh, what's his name? Kevin yeah. Sorbo, right? Yeah, like, I'm going to stay in the entertainment industry no matter what, and I don't care how um, painfully average the output of our product, product is, you know? And I think saying painfully average is being painfully generous. Yeah, well, I'm glad you caught that. <laughs> But that, that's <laughs> like, and to me, like, when you have the option, like, I can go out and I'm going to date myself. We're going to date this, date this episode here. I can go out tonight and see God's Not Dead or whatever this new movie is that's out now. Or I can go see um, Black Panther, you know, and see, mm-hmm. like, like, in one weekend, this movie has eclipsed, you know, expectations by, by a long shot. And so, like, do I want to do I want to go something go see something that's just kind of like derivative and average and on the whole is just kind of kind of can go yeah okay great or do I want to go see something that's really gonna move me for two hours you know yeah well yeah and and I think when it comes to the Christian films especially what's coming out of Pure Flix yeah um, I mean but like what I've seen out of Christian movies historically like I've seen some Christian movies I think they're bad. Mm-hmm. But they're not like, like horrifyingly bad, right? Like, right. There are things you can still enjoy, even for their badness. Yeah, and that's a and that's a certain kind of quality. Mm-hmm. But like <laughs> all this stuff that like we see coming out of Pure Flix, it's like, you know, it's like you know how like like shows like The Office or Fringe or something that people are actually currently watching. You know, yeah. Um, you know, it's like they they have this thing called a show bible. Yeah. And it's just the in the in that Bible outlines everything that's like happened, character interactions, character arcs. So like new writers can come and they can refer to the Bible and know what's within the realm of writing. Yeah. And that's it generally can be kind of a sizable document, especially when something you have like, you know, like a series like, you know, Office that went ten seasons, ten years of yeah. show. Um, but I feel like the one for Netflix or not Netflix, Pureflix is like a one sheet age of paper that's yeah. like half filled with text that's like probably 14 point. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you know what 14 point means, it means like, you know, old people can read it without glasses. Right. <laughs> you know, old people like me. You know? Yeah. Um, it, because it's like, okay, make Christians look perfect, make non Christians look stupid. Yeah. And only good things happen. And if a bad thing happens, then we have to like have some old thing. Generally speaking, it seems to always be like the a, an older black person that has to like tell you about like why it's not that wretched of a thing. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if if there's anything about these movies I've seen, it's they tend to be racist in, in kind of a way. Right. And like all the actors sound as if like they're doing uh Shakespeare but um, while doing weed, right, oh, and, yeah. and and all the background music <laughs> is always like this generic, forgettable pseudo Middle Eastern music. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I mean, it just as somebody who notices the the music and that's in movies. Yeah. If I notice your music, it's either because it's really, really good, like shockingly good, mm-hmm. or it's shockingly bad. Yeah. And the funny part is, is the one thing I'm not saying is that Christian entertainment is automatically bad, right? I think, like, there's a reason why Charlton Heston's Ten Commandments is shown on TV every year, right? Right. There's a reason why Prince of Egypt is still something I will play at least once a year, and not even for my kids. Like, I will watch it just because it is a beautiful piece of of animated uh biblical storytelling and it's mm-hmm. phenomenal from beginning to end right so it's not the fact that it's christian that makes it bad i want to be clear about that it's it's the fact that that like we we don't need, we don't have the a team working on on a lot of this like pure flicks content we don't have the b team working on it like we have like the like the double z team <laughs> <laughs> like work working on this stuff. And that's we have to thing, go the alphabet twice. Right? Like if we're gonna be doing everything to the glory of God, then like it kind of shows in the quality of our output that the people making this stuff 
aren't really concerned about the glory of God, as weird as that is, or else it would be much better. Yeah, and I, and I guess that's my thing. That's the thing that I rage against. It's like, like if you really believe that that like God is going to judge this work, like do better. <laughs> right. I mean, it's like if you go and you like if you watch the or make the mistake of watching the the Nicolas Cage version of Left, Left Behind, it yeah. is trash. Yeah. Um, and it's it, because it's like it, that's the thing. Like you know, you're going to be judged for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and like. It's not like we can't have movies with Christian points that are that are good. Yeah. Um, like we can have that. Like one of the most Christian movies I've ever seen is The Apostle. Um, right, Robert Duvall. Yeah. Robert Duvall, who owns. Um, I mean, my gosh, like that movie is it's nuanced. It's performed well. The music is good. There yeah. is complexity to the storyline. There is redemption, but it's not shallow. It is hard earned redemption i mean it's yeah it's amazing but then in like the christian sphere they want to make just tr like hallmark trash or, or whatever like what's that uh that new one coming out the great american family yes yes that's a great segue um and for those of you who don't know great american family is a new um media outing from Candace Cameron Cameron Bure Burr Bure B U R E. I'm gonna assume that's Bure. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Beer. Fam famously known as one of the Full House children from TV's Full House. Um, so she's starting up essentially what is a competitor to um, uh, it's the, like Hallmark the Hallmark Channel, Channel right? Yeah. Like super, like uh, like I would go beyond family friendly. Like this is like really kind of like. Um, uh, you know, like rated G twenty four seven, sugary saccharin, happy, 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 joy, joy channel. You know, right, because because yeah. the Hallmark Channel of all things right. has become too like dark or edgy or <laughs> satanic too, or Hallmark is too edgy. Yeah, yeah, right. And and so, um, Great American Family has announced that they have zero plans to. To highlight or tell the stories of the LGBTQ on on their network, and so it's like it's interesting. Once again, like you would think, like because this is in my mind, the Great American Family thing is clearly a money grab, right? Somebody says, mm -hmm. "Well, well, hey, there, there's a there's a space in this vertical of pseudo Christian TV for for more than one player, so we're gonna try to make some money." And right out of the gate, like they start with the whole thing of what they're not and who they hate instead of just making great content and proving, proving themselves as a worthy alternative to Hallmark. Yeah. And I mean, I, I didn't look, look into, into it, but I would have to think yeah, that like, cause it's, it's such a, a pale money grab that like Kanye has to be involved in this. Somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is Donald Trump around? I think it's like, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't oh know. gosh. Yeah. That's, that's another thing. I'm, right. I'm tired of seeing those headlines. <laughs> oh. oh, just wait. We're going to get there. Oh, yeah, and I don't want to think about that right now because it's just it's terrible. But you know, as you know, I, I'm like I hate that whole like vote with your dollars thing. Um, yeah, I mean I really hate that saying. But like in this case, it's like Christians. You know, it's like when we engage as media, like we're telling them, oh, we want more of this thing that you're giving me. Right. So if we keep engaging the the saccharine, just real low rent garbage that just caricatures us and everybody else in the universe mm -hmm. like that that speaks about what's like what our values are yes and so like is the question like just merely telling other people like stop consuming this filth or like is the thing we need to do to be like hey stop seeing people in such black and white terms and realize like everybody you interact with is somebody we were told by scripture to love is somebody in whom, you know, like they were created through Christ. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really know what like a good solution to this is. So I, I, I actually have a thought about that, about solutions. So, so first let's define the problem. Let, let me define my idea of the problem, how this okay. breaks the church is that I think this actually contributes to the idiocracy, right? The dumbing down mm -hmm. of the church. 
right? So we're not going to tell good stories that are thoughtful, that have nuance, like The Apostle. It, I would argue like a movie like Dogma, you know, with uh, Ben <laughs> Affleck and Matt Damon. Now, you may not like it, and it may, like, set your ears on fire to watch that movie, but it has some interesting themes that are worth considering, mm -hmm. right? Even if you For don't sure. agree with them, right? And so I think when you kind of make these Hallmark love stories, essentially, but you just insert God into that. You know, oh, I'm just praying for the love of my life, or I lost my husband in combat, and I'm just praying for for a father figure for my boys, right? You you make Hallmark Channel content, but you just put insert God and Jesus into it. I think you're just um, contributing to, like, the Christian that sees God as nothing more than Santa Claus, that sees God mm -hmm. as nothing more than a, than a judge with a gavel, Right. And I yeah, think yeah. it actually inverts what's supposed to be happening. Christians are not supposed to be going brain dead in escapism in front of their TV for three hours a night watching, um, you know, God's Not Dead or the Great American Family Network. Christians are supposed to be relating to people in the real world and, and um, inspiring people in the real world and discipling people in the real world. And serving people's needs, serving people's needs, words is hard, in the real world. And so that's what I think needs to happen, is the church needs to get itself out of that mindset of Christian education is going to help me. Christian self-help books are going to help me. Um, pastor, a televangelist pastor who wants $20 a month from me is going to help me. It's like, no. You know what the best help is? Is actually doing the work that we were created to do. Because yeah, when like, you do it, you get better at it. And then you can do more and you can teach others to do it. And then the kingdom becomes real here on earth. Yeah, and I want to just, like, stop you from moving forward there. Because like you said, like, in the real world, like, yeah. 800 times, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it, because, you know, that's the thing. is that, Like, movies and, and books, you know, any kind of media like that, like, they can reflect the real world. Or they can deflect the real world. Oh, okay. You know, and I think that, you know, if if we're going to have Christians trying to create, you know, art and media that reflects the real world, I think we can get along with that. I think we can support those individuals in that work. Yeah. But like Pure Flix and Great American Family, they, they try to deflect the real world. They don't want, you know, they don't want children to see that like, you know, that there's a, a real world out there where bad things happen. Right. You know, not until they go to college and then lose their faith. I mean, just right. because that's what happens. <laughs> right. But I, I think, like, I think, like, like your, 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 I'll call it a rant. You know, yeah. I think, I think, it really, I think right there, it's like, if like you, if like you and me, maybe can, I don't know what we can do for our part, but if we can do our part and others can do their, their part to like try to keep, our faith rooted in the real world. I think that's, I think that's a good way of inoculating against this nonsense. Absolutely. I think that'll preach. I totally agree. All right. All right. Hey, so this is church is lame. The point of this show is that we're just two guys who love the church and are trying to answer the question of why is church losing, losing ground? Why is it less relevant in, in America today? And every episode is our attempt to answer that question a little bit more. So if you want to be part of the conversation, by all means, leave a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down and click those subscribe buttons and all those other clicky, clicky buttons. And if you're listening to this podcast on your favorite podcast player, shoot us an email if you want to be part of the conversation. Podcast at gmail.com. And with that, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.